Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll, I'll formally welcome everyone. Welcome everyone, thanks for joining us this evening. We've done a few seminars already or webinars um, about a variety of topics. Uh, I, I've covered some really basic introductory topics on using your projector, um, tried to do a little bit more advanced. Last week, me, Max, and Jeremy talked about mapping and I probably shouldn't even say me because it was Max and Jeremy that did all of the talking because I don't know anything about mapping. Um, my name is Jim Weiss. I'm one of the owners of Projectogram. Um, we have uh, Jeremy Martirano and Max Weinberg with me. I'm hoping that this will show up when I share that. Um, so we have um, them, uh, those guys with me as well. Um, they know mapping way more and way better than I do. And we get asked about that at Projectogram so often. How do I map? What do I need to do? What software do I need? So last week we did this uh, little webinar and it turned out really great. And we knew that people want to know more about certain topics. So for this week, we're going to dive really deep into cake mapping. And hopefully this is useful for anyone that's been wanting to learn this or maybe knows a little bit about it, but wants to dive a little bit deeper into it. So to get us started, I'm going to um, clear this image off. And I have this video that Max uh, shared on um, social media, Facebook, maybe Instagram. I'm, where'd you, did you just put it Facebook, Max, or where'd you do it? Uh, just Facebook. Okay. So um, you, I guess you just want to talk about yourself for just a quick second, Max, maybe introduce yourself, where you're from, what you, what you guys primarily do. Sure. Um, my name is Max. I own Empire Entertainment and Photo Booth, and now kind of going into the AV industry a little bit deeper, we're kind of pivoting because of what's going on, uh, primarily focusing on mapping and stuff like that. It's kind of growing exponentially. It's just kind of growing, which is a good thing. Um, I, I have an AV background. I've got a DJ background. Uh, I still currently, although I'm furloughed, like a lot of people work for a major AV company uh, that has, I guess, branches throughout the United States. Um, so I do kind of have a luxury of having some toys to play with that normal people don't or normal companies don't. Uh, but that's probably going to be changing here in the future, so to speak. Uh, but I do come from a DJ background first. I love technology and I love mapping and it just kind of fell into it. And it's a lot of fun and it's not a real big field right now. So it's kind of something that you can kind of get into and uh, maybe grow with it as, as the business grows. But uh, it, it's, it's something that I really enjoy doing. Great. Well, thank you. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show this video. This is what Max had shared on Facebook. We're going to, I'm going to show the video real quick. We may talk through it just a little bit here. Um, and then I'm going to stop it at a few points and we're going to dissect exactly what Max did. So the, just to summarize a little bit what we're going to be providing in the seminar, the first part, um, Max and I are going to dialogue and chat a little bit about this um, cake mapping video that he did that not only the video itself is it just going to be an awesome marketing tool for him and his company. Um, but it just shows the power of mapping and what you can do. And it, it's really cool because he didn't mean for it to be a behind the scenes um, video, but there are some spots that we've discovered that the, the camera pans one way or another, and you can see exactly some different ways that he did this um, projection map. There's cake mapping. So we're gonna stop at a few spots, talk about what equipment he used, how he um, basically put this whole thing together. So we're gonna do that first. Uh, after we get done with that, um, we have Jeremy who is standing by with, he has a projector uh, all set up, ready to go. He has his fake cake all set up and ready to go. And he is actually going to get into, um, you're using Grand VJ, correct Jeremy? Yep. Okay, so he's gonna be using Grand VJ and he's gonna actually show you how to map right here live on the spot. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. I've seen him do just a real little bit of this. I haven't done this mapping stuff before. So for me, this is even pretty cool. So let's start with this video. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up. So this is the video that I mentioned. Uh, this is Max's video. This is what he had posted recently to Facebook. Um, just a really great marketing piece for him to showcase what you can do with cake mapping. Um, I'm gonna let this thing play through uh, just so you can see everything that the video showcases. And it's only about a minute and a half long. And when it gets to the end, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I wanna ask Max some questions about some things that he did. I guess first, let me ask a quick question about this, Max, while everyone's watching. Um, did you have a professional shoot this or was it shot on a phone or a DSLR? What was it shot on? Um, I actually shot that video. Okay. Um, it was done with a DJI Osmo Pocket. 
that little, um, just like a little gimbal type thing. I have it around here somewhere maybe. Um, it's just a little gimbal thing that you can walk around with. It's, it's really a cool little thing that you can get video with. It, yeah, the video, turn, the video turned out just great. All right, so we'll let this finish up here and then we're gonna go back through and watch and I'm gonna point out se several things that if you didn't catch it the first time through, that we'll talk about everything that Max did to create this. And Jim, I don't know, if my, is my mic on? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay, just a little thing, and people ask, um, the video itself, people are like, well, you've got some weird video in there. This was actually done for a hotel in St. Petersburg called the Vinoy, which is owned by the owner of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, which I guess I'm now a fan of being from New England and Gronkowski now playing for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Um, so he also owns the Buccaneers as well as Manchester United. So we were there to show our mapping skills and uh, show what we can do. So we tried to tailor make the video to what would be applicable to his palette. So it's really not strictly just a wedding cape situation per se, uh, but it's got the video of Tampa Bay in there and the Tampa and uh, Manchester United. So it's, yeah, it's great. Hey, okay. Max, um, yeah. oh, real quick. I just wanted to say uh, that's a perfect example of to show people that this is not just for weddings. This can right. be for anything. I mean, please don't, you know, let's start thinking out the box here. <laughs> you know, it can right. be for anything. And here's that little camera, by the way, uh, you asked about. Yeah, that turned out great. So here it is, right? It's just this little DJI Osmo, which is really kind of inexpensive, but it's got a little gimbal. I don't know how good you can see it. I'm looking at my camera. Um, but it's like 300 bucks. It's not that expensive, That's but cool. you can, you can shoot in 4k and it's got a nice. selfie mode. So if you hit it three times, it'll turn around and go into selfie mode. Um, but it's made by DJI. It's really a cool little pocket camera. You can take it wherever you go and get some pretty decent video from it. So that's cool. Nice tip. Thank right. you. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start at the beginning here and right before we got on, uh, we, we got the zoom set up. Um, one of the first things that Max pointed out to Jeremy and I that I missed, and I think Jeremy said he missed also, is I watched this video several times and I saw two projectors and we're going we're gonna to talk about those two projectors in a minute. And then Max said, hey, by the way, there's another projector in this that I think you said you didn't use, but do you want to point out where it is, Max, and uh, right. talk about that a little bit? Yeah, there's a projector right there on the cocktail round table right in the front. And you can kind of see we encompassed we actually took a box that we had catered food. We had like some cookies or something that came and we were looking for something to shroud the projector that's located on that cocktail table. So we took the box, it was white. And I think, yeah, I think we left it the way it is. We just kind of cut it and we shaped it around the projector, but we left some air for the projector to breathe. We ended up not using the projector. It was gonna illuminate the back scrim, uh, the Lycra in the background that the uplights are on. Uh, but it, it just didn't work out, but it's still sitting there, but you can, if you have more time or if it's something that you want to expand into, I had actually mapped around the cake. We were going to use more video, like uh, foliage type video and stuff like that to create a background instead of just being white. Uh, it just didn't pan out, but I think I have some B-roll footage of that and I'll see if I can find it and, and send it along, but it, we just ended up not using it. How tiny is that projector? Because that looks like a really small cocktail table. Um, I think it was like a little Panasonic fisheye type 3k nice. projector, just a small one. That's cool. Um, but I was just going to use it for the out, you know, around the cake. So it wasn't really, didn't have to be high powered. Didn't have to do a whole lot. I just wanted to use it for imaging on the back. Uh, but we just never used it. That's a good point. Cool. Yeah. So let's talk about everything that we can see here. So talk, did you provide everything that we can see as far as the up lights, these panels on the side, the panel in the back? Yes. Okay. That's, um, those are basically, it's called huddle rooms, but it's, it's, um, how do I, it's kind of like backdrops for a photo booth. It's the aluminum tubing with the zippered type, uh, white Lycra that goes like pillow, around it. Like the pillow kind of thing. Yeah. Like a pillow top, like okay. a pillowcase, uh, photo booth backdrop. Okay. Uh, but these are like semicircles, and, um, you can use them for all different types of applications. But we used them to hide the projectors that were located on the flank of the uh, cake itself. 
I see now I'm looking down at the bottom and I recognize, yeah, these kinds of feet. Yep. Um, okay. So you have two of those. Do you know how tall these go? Uh, I think those were maybe eight feet, maybe, maybe 10, eight to 10 feet. Okay. And then the backdrop, this backdrop is the same thing? Same thing. Just more pieces of it. So is this one fluid piece on the back? Um, let me see. Yes. Well, I think there was, let me look a little bit closer. I got lights in mine. It is one big piece that we did all. It was all one big backdrop. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go a little bit forward. Uh, what, what was this called? What, what did you call this again? What did you call those pieces? Which, which part? What did you call the, um, the panels? They're, uh, we call them a huddle room, but it's just, it's, it's probably different terminology from, okay. from company to company, but um, it's just a standard, I think you can get them uh, like from the photo booth people. Right. Uh, you can probably order them from your favorite backdrop provider. Yeah, we, we have one, like we use one in, at Mobile Beat for like our backdrop for our booth because they're awesome, they're right. so easy. Um, so, okay, great. All right, so we're gonna keep going here. I wanna get to a spot where we can see some stuff. All right, so now that we're into some video, talk to me about um, what you had to do in advance. So did you have all this, you had all this footage, I'm guessing, already in advance prepared? Actually, no. Yes, Anna, we had the, the B-roll footage we had beforehand, um, but the elements like the water falling and the hearts and stuff like that, I had actually got that the night before and stayed up till about three, four o'clock in the morning, um, mapping it in. It was just like a tight schedule where we only had the ballroom for a certain part of time and the owner was flying in a certain time and it was really tight schedule. But I ended up getting that elements to the uh, cake and whatnot the night before. Okay. Um, all right. So what, what software did you use uh, at the event for your actual mapping? That again is uh, our chaos. The media master pro is what I primarily map in. Okay. Um, you, you can use other programs such as Resolume, Mad Mapper, Heavy M stuff like that. Um, I'm just certified in media master and our chaos and whatnot. So that's my preferred mapping software, but there's Grand BJ, which is a sub -com company of our chaos. They're, both, they're made by the same company. Uh, so it's essentially the same thing. Is what was the, what was it called again by our chaos? This one's media master pro media master. So is, um, is, is grand VJ maybe something more common or more affordable for a DJ or someone that's just getting started versus Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, it, it's kind of uh, the Media Master Pro has more bells, more whistles, more things that you would use in a more, you get more layers, you get more effects, you get more stuff. Uh, but for basic mapping and whatnot, it, Grand VJ is perfectly great for the DJ industry. There's, there's no uh, probably uh, less of a uh, value for getting grand bj as opposed to media master okay. that's a learning curve too <laughs> yeah exactly yeah that's what i was trying to yeah come up with so how were you connected to your like how was your computer connected to your projectors we had a video run through the back i don't know if you can see it but our tech table was set up right behind that big scrim the, the 10 footer that's running from stage to, from left to right from stage right to stage left we were set up right behind that major wall. So were you, are you running, uh, and we'll see here in a minute that you had projectors on either side, but were you running one line out from your computer to, to one line to each projector from the computer or from like a switcher or something else from your computer? We were coming off my computer that we had the signal split from a DA um, to the two projectors. Okay, got it, that's great. Good. Okay, so now I'm gonna let it go for just a minute here. Talk, talk about this a little bit, and Jeremy's gonna dive a little bit deeper into this when he gets into the cake and when he shows us that. But um, talk to us, is, is this more complex to create this type of effect where you know, you're going layer by layer and this cascading effect that looks really, really cool versus doing something that's just one design across the whole cake? All right, here's a little cheat hack. That video is pre-produced and you can buy it online. 
I don't want to take credit for things that I don't necessarily do. But you, if you search the internet hard enough, you can find elements such as that um, and just purchase the element and then map it into your cake. Um, it, the name of the company is called the Lime Art Group. They're based out of the UK. Um, they are a mapping software company or elements or B-roll or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you can buy those specific and more. There's a bunch more. They're not super cheap. Uh, but there are a bunch more elements out there that you can purchase to make your show even more cool at, at a cost, but it, it'll make your life easier in the long run. So a fraction of the cost of creating it. Correct. For sure. And yeah. for time and effort and labor. <clears throat> I mean, I do After Effects. I do all those programs and whatnot. It would take me hours on end to build something like that. So to make your life easier, you can go out and purchase it if you want. Great. Okay. All right. So let's let this play a little bit longer. Yeah. Cause this just looks so cool. So now we're going to get to a spot here where we're going to see, well, you can kind of see it here down in the corner. If you look down in the bottom left-hand corner, I'm going to let it play for just a little bit longer. Cause I know there's a better spot coming up here in a second. That's going to show. There we go. Okay. So this is projector. We'll call this projector one over on the left. Um, number one, we're using the exact same projector on both sides. Talk to us about what the projectors are on um, and how you had those, um, basically everything involved with the projectors. Yep, uh, those are the same projectors that I used to map for the hospitals. Those are the 6K NEC projectors. Um, they're sitting on about a 10 foot truss. I can't remember if we use eight foot or 10 foot, but I believe it's 10 foot, uh, a 10 foot stick of truss. And they were, we had the, the, the socks form and we covered the trussing with the white stocking, the white socks, whatever you want to call it, whatever your company calls it. And we had the projectors sitting on top. Just Now, it looks like they're not shooting at a straight angle because the cake is kind of kiltered. But that's one of the secrets, one of the things that I do is that you can turn the cake. It really doesn't change the, the value of the cake or the overall look at the cake you're just kind of turning it so that it's more applicable to your projectors because i'm shooting from a 45 degree angle onto the cake itself and you really can't you know it, tell the difference by if you stand out in front of the cake you're still going to get the same effect but the cake is just turned for my purposes so that i have a flat surface to map on okay um what do you know the model of that Panasonic, I know you did it in your seminar last week, which for anyone who didn't see the seminar last week, that's on YouTube. You could just jump on the, our projector gram YouTube channel. You may even be watching this on our YouTube channel. Don't leave this. You can, you can watch the other one later. We'll leave it up there forever. But, um, and that may have been in there, but do you know the model for this, the Panasonic? I don't, but I can have it by the end of the webinar that we do. That we're doing okay, cool. Right yeah. When Jeremy takes over, we can, we can jump in later and, and let people know what that one is. Um, Okay, so let's keep going a little bit here. So again, we have projector number one, as I'm calling it over here on the left. And then we'll see here in a second, projector number two is over on the right. We talked about this a little bit uh, before we got going on the Zoom, uh, before we started streaming everybody, but I, I told Max, I thought um, just the way that he's doing this is, is really pretty awesome. If you tuned in last week and saw Jeremy set up, that's a really great setup. And I think that's the more common way that um, we are doing cake mapping these days. And I, by me, by we, I don't mean me specifically, but more DJs and, and uh, lighting companies are doing cake mapping is the way that Jeremy has done it. And I know some other people that do it that way. Um, this is the first time I've seen someone do it the way that you've done it, Max, where instead of it being uh, flying from overneath or, or, you know, elevated overneath and coming out in front of the cake, it's off to both sides. Um, and it just looks so nice and neat and clean. And you don't, I love, I've talked about this in my seminars last week. Uh, I love a Wizard of Oz effect. I love when you don't know where it's coming from. And to the average person who just sees all this, they may see those panels, but there's a good chance they have no idea the projectors are back there. They probably just think it's part of the stage or the scenery, if you will. So, um, okay. So here's projector number two, right-hand side. Everything's, I'm guessing, identically the same. Same projector, same um, truss. Did you talk about like what kind of trussing you're using, just in case people are curious? It's just an eight foot stick of truss on, um, on a truss base. It's okay. uh, standard heavy duty, like, okay. yeah, like a heavy duty truss that we would fly 
projectors and lighting from? If you had to bring all of this to an event, can you get by with just like an SUV or a van, or is this something that you need a, like a box, a small box truck or, or a big cargo van for? A small box truck for more than likely. Uh, well, you got the, the truss itself is 10 feet long. So de- depending on if you have several small pieces of truss that you're going to bolt together on site, which is going to take you more time to put together, then I suppose you could probably fit it in the back of an SUV. Uh, but you would at least probably need a trailer or something of that nature to to show up if not a small box truck. Okay. All right. We'll let this keep rolling here. Like, like Max pointed out earlier, if you weren't tuning in, like, you know, you can see there's footage, there's stuff that, that looks like it's for a wedding. And then there's other content that looks like it could be for anything. And the cool thing too, what I like about this and it's just a general thing for cake mapping is that, you know, there's the bride's cake, there's the groom's cake. You can almost get a bride's cake and a groom's cake out of the one cake. I just, you know, you had the sports there for a little while. You can do the romantic thing for a little while. Um, So you can kind of serve both purposes and kind of maybe make the bride and groom happy. And even like Jeremy, I love, if you've ever seen one of Jeremy's seminars, he's got this portion of one of his seminars where he talks about creating these, these moments. Like there's this one where the bride and groom are in the room and all of a sudden the fireworks start going off in the background and the couple does, or the bride, I don't think knew about it. The groom knew about it, but she was so surprised. And so that could even be something where that's set up in advance with the mapper that, Hey, you know, when everyone walks in and for the first you know hour, it's going to be this. And then at some point we want to transition to something cool sports for the guy. And I think it's really cool. You can even, you can even like, I love with Max is set up. You could split it down the middle. Oh the yeah. Left side be wedding elegant, the right side that's be cool. Mario or, you know, whatever. <laughs> no. That's a good point too. And that's like, you know, yeah. there, that, that was a style of cake for a little while where, it yeah. looked, you know, they had that divide. So that's a great point. The possibilities are endless. I yeah. love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So uh, I know I asked a lot of questions. Um, I guess if anyone had questions, I know I saw someone ask where the content came from that you mentioned, Max and I, Jeremy, thanks for jumping in and, and answering that. Um, if anyone have has any other questions for Max, and Max, you're going to stick around for Jeremy's, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm following the chat right now, so I'm trying to see if I can answer any questions that. Awesome. That so, if, if anyone has any questions that they think of later that they want to ask ask Max specifically about this, um, you know, feel free to let let him know. How did you um, going back to the actual promotional video part? The mapping is the bulk of what we're talking about, of course. But then, how did you? Um, how did you make this, the video turned out just awesome. I, I know you used that DJI gimbal that you have, but then what did you use to edit your video? Uh, Adobe Premiere. Okay. And I, uh, I pay, I forget, it's like maybe 20 bucks a month roughly for music beds. That's uh, royalty free. You just pay. And there's a, a bunch of different uh, music that you can choose from. So you don't, you won't get nailed on Facebook or any other type of social media for music that you don't own the rights to that you're going to get <laughs> muted halfway through or whatever. Um, but I can get that too and and put that up in the chat and give that to you before uh, we get out of here tonight. Great. Um, this uh, kind of scrolling through, um, scrolling through comments, something that, um, someone said was talking about, um, the actual terminology cake mapping. Um, this this is a question for you too, Jeremy. And I don't know if you're going to cover this at all, but, um, do you call this cake mapping? Do you have another phrase for this? Um, how do you guys sell this when someone asks or do people come to you and they're asking for it and they already know it's called cake mapping? Um, you know, most of it's cake mapping, cake projection mapping. Uh, some people call it living cake. Um, I, you know, I don't, I haven't really heard too many other options out there. Okay. I mean, everybody has a different name for it. I mean, I've heard a gobo or a monogram. The weirdest one I heard was, can you put a headboard light behind our table? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> They'll come up, they will surprise us and come up with some of the weirdest names for something. So uh, just be prepared. <laughs> you have to decipher what they're asking for. Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, well, this has been great, Max. Um, anything else you, you think people might wanna know about? I mean, it's just, it's practice, practice, practice. And Jeremy's going to go through that with you. It's just doing it over and over and over again and getting better accustomed to your surroundings and what you're going to do like this, 
place that we were doing here for this cake, they, they brought all their salespeople in, they brought their chef in, they brought all kinds of people in. So we were trying to show them a turnkey operation where we were going to, and in fact, we did it that day. We marked where our projectors would go for the next one. We marked where the cake would be for the next one. Uh, the chef got together with us and he actually brought that fake cake that we mapped on. Um, so it's like working together as a team with a hotel or the catering people or the whole staff in general so that the next time you do it, it's faster and quicker. And if you have a bride coming in to do a site visit and do a walkthrough and she wants to see something and you need to get it up really quick and get it on the cake, you can pretty much be dialed in because in Grand VJ as well as Media Master, you can save your setups, you can save your mapping, you can save everything to that cake and be pretty close if you mark your floor. Uh, we call it spiking the floor, a little bit of tape and whatnot. Um, but it's, it's something that can be done beforehand so that when you arrive on site, it's just that much more quicker and that much easier each and every time you do it. That's great. And you actually, I thought of a question right as you started talking and it made me think, uh, made me think of a question that you already answered. So you said they provided the cake and it was a fake cake, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, for, for you personally, when you do cake mapping, are you, uh, do you have your own that you would bring out if needed or do you ask them to provide a fake cake? I have a couple that they can choose from. I have a couple different layered cakes that are fake. Uh, I have a couple different round ones that I practice on that uh, they can choose from. Or I'll get with the baker that they've chosen as far as, you know, the cake provider. Um, and usually there's some, some boutique bakers and stuff like that here locally in my area that I work with a lot. So I know them on a firsthand basis and I'll just give them a call and they'll provide me the dimensions of the cake and whatnot. And I can pretty much do a lot of the homework prior to getting to the actual reception site. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Um, sure. As mentioned, Max is going to stick around and listen to um, what Jeremy presents. Um, Jeremy's going to go through and map a cake. Um, so we'll do that in just a second. Uh, someone here, I, I lost it, somewhere in the comments. Uh, and for anyone who's joining us that wasn't here earlier, so we're, we're streaming live on the Projectogram Facebook page, um, Projection Pros Facebook group, and then YouTube uh, live. Um, someone asked, I'm, I'm using a, a, something called Restream, which is, I'm new to this. Um, and it has this really cool interface where you can see the chat and it's, has, it pulls in the chat from every single source where you're streaming. Um, what's really nice about it is that it pulls it in, but it doesn't tell you people's names. It just says Facebook user, Facebook user, Facebook user. So some of these, I can't really tell who's saying what, but someone asked what our YouTube channel is. Um, if you just go to YouTube and type in projector gram and just make sure it's projector and then gram. Um, some people think it's projectogram and actually the name we came up with the name basically because we were using a projector to make monograms and we just put those two words together. So it's just projectogram. If you go to YouTube and type that in, it should hopefully come right up. Um, real, uh, real quick, Max, one last couple questions since I've got this up and people are asking, is that, uh, on the fake cake, is there icing, is that fondant, or is it just styrofoam? Uh, it's basically styrofoam painted white. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it's a flat, now I know Jeremy has talked about using fake cakes that have, I guess, icing on it, Jeremy, or they're pretty much more realistic fake cakes. Uh, but this particular one, it was just a flat kind of boxy type fake cake that was plain Jane, so to speak. Okay. Well, thanks, Max. And this segues perfectly because Jeremy has a fake cake uh, just a few feet away from him. So I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy now. Uh, I'm going to let Jeremy take over, uh, share his screen. All right. Um, Jeremy, I don't know if you want to say anything about yourself. I, I, introduce yourself at all. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, Jeremy with Karma Event Productions here in Arizona. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This has been really awesome. Is, I've actually wanted to do more of these videos so much. Uh, we've just been so busy and, and well, now we have all the time, which is great. So, <laughs> um, but you know, uh, just like Max was saying, as far as the cake thing goes, uh, all of the above, anything can go. Um, it, it can be boxes, it can be fake cake, it can be um, styrofoam. Oh, so we have two cakes. We have um, our bigger cake, the one that we got made, um, where we saw in the other video, uh, is bigger and uh, it was actually more of a plaster like the, the cake maker kind of plastered it <laughs> to make it really sharp edges. 
Uh, the one you're going to see today is our first cake that we had made, which was the styrofoam with fondant on it. Um, I don't, it's smaller, so it was easier for me to bring here, but um, it doesn't have as sharp edges, but it looks more real. So honestly, and you can even do a real cake. So, you know, all the above really. So, all right, let's get started here. Um, before I do start, I do have to give this out, uh, give a shout out to my friend Cooper Brown out in Utah. He, uh, he sent me this photo. I don't know, can you guys see that? Let's see, where is that? So he is following along at home. He's got a cake ready and our chaos ready to go. So he's gonna be following along at home. I love that. That's, that's the dedication and passion right there. That's, that's awesome. great, yeah. <laughs> All righty, so let's go ahead and I think we're good. I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, I've been disabled by the host. No, actually, can you, can you enable me, Jim, please? You, you, it's not letting you? Uh, nope, not yet. I wonder, let me try. I stopped sharing my screen, which was the only thing that should have been blocking you. If you want to try now. Oh, now we're good. Okay. All right, cool. So this is, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna actually walk you through step-by-step step, uh, in our chaos. I'm gonna try and, we're gonna do a deep dive here, you know, just specifically for uh, cakes, but I'm gonna show you some features here, some little neat little tricks as well. So um, let me switch over my camera because you know you don't want to see me. And uh, okay, I gotta figure out where did it go. It's up here. We're gonna go to our Logitech. Boom! It's the cake now. At a good size, good angle on that. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Jim, are you good to move us side by side? Yep. Yeah, you're side oh, by cool. side right now. I don't know if you can tell from your side, but yeah, you're side by side right now. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, I, I'm, my preview is about thirty seconds behind, so. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> All right, guys. So what we've got going on here is uh, here's our chaos. Grand VJ, like Max said, Media Master is a whole different beast. Um, but this one is much easier and much more affordable. Um, but they're all very powerful. They both use the same mapping engine. So a lot of the, um, the concepts we're talking about here, you can still apply to uh, Media Master if you want to jump into that. So uh, here, let me... Uh, so I just wanted to give you a quick preview. So you can see the cake there. Um, this is, uh, so here's the, the fake cake. So that's just a three tier fondant cake. Uh, you can see it's not really sharp edges. Uh, we've, it's pretty old too, but um, it, it serves a purpose. So this is just a little preview right here. And then you can see um, when I bring the tears, uh, the whole cake down, I have some wedding video on the tears. So this is typically how we do it where we do either just visuals on the whole cake and we do videos like this on each tier and we combine them both. It's kind of hard to see, but you know, if I bring it down here, you can kind of see uh, the layers in there. And let me make sure, cause, oh yeah. I had my brightness all the way down to maybe help with the video. There we go. <laughs> A little behind the scenes there. Um, and actually, as you guys can see, the projector is right behind me. This is so DIY in my, my home office here. All right, so let's jump over to uh, the mapping side of it. And as you can see here, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you what the final product is gonna be, and then I'm gonna erase everything and start fresh. So you guys can just totally follow along. But you can see we have all of our surfaces here, which some are locked, boom. So you have all the tier surfaces, and then we have the one big one right there. So let me go ahead and bring down the tiers so you can kind of see, you know, the cake there. And then if I bring down where is it, that layer, go back to the cake, and that just gives you a little preview of, you, know, you can see all the surfaces there. All right, so nice, pretty done. I'm going to delete everything. So these are all my surfaces over here. And just say goodbye to everything. Goodbye. So this is basically what you guys would start off with, right? Just really basic. Uh, you are going to, uh, I'm not gonna get super, super basic into this, but I will talk my way through it <laughs> so you guys can see. But um, when you have your projector here, you do have to make sure that the little radial button is uh, launched, uh, is uh, activated here. Because if it's on your monitor, when you go full screen, 
it's gonna um, it's gonna take over your laptop too. So you just want to make sure whatever projectors are you're using are highlighted there. So um, first off, you just start with doing a surface. Let me go to a test image. So you can see I've got this surface right here. So it's not gonna work. It's wrong angle. It's <laughs> So what we're going to do is, let me move this over here so I can see. First thing you want to do, I'm going to build, let's see, let's build the tiers, right? Okay. So all of the different surfaces. First thing you have to do is, oh wait, let me highlight my, my mouse so you can spotlight that. Now we can see that. You have to come over here to the right where it says edit grid. You click that. Now you actually have individual control of every corner. <clears throat> all right. So. What we're gonna do is I'm just going to visually, you know, and I'm sitting right here in front of the cake, I'm just gonna draw this in and kind of match it up to where I need it. And there you go. All right, so there, that's one done. Now we go back over here, hit another surface. You know, usually I'll resize it a little bit, kind of get it in position. And then I will edit the grid and, um, you know, just kind of line these things up. Now it's kind of cool. You have snapping that sometimes is a blessing, sometimes is a curse. Right now it's a blessing because it just helps me line up right next to the other one. And I'll come back and fine tune these things a little bit more. Um, so Michael, I'm, I'm looking at some of the questions at the same time. Michael Gardner asks, do you have to have the mapper open? Oh, Grand VJ open first. Yes, you need to start with Grand VJ first because if you open the mapper before Grand VJ, uh, it will not connect to that software. So, but it's an easy fix. You just shut down mapper and relaunch uh, Grand VJ first. The cool thing is, is when you shut down mapper, um, it will save everything you, you've done. So you know it's it's all there in the history. So let's see. Um, I'm going to do another layer here. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up with six layers, I think, of tiers. Um, there we go. And edit that grid again. Let's see, is there anything else yet? Yeah. I'm going to get to the uh, individual points on the full cake surface. This is just my little way of getting a big impact on a little area. And I'm going to come back and touch these up in a second because there's a lot of touch up to do here. Um, well, not a whole lot, honestly. Um, you'll see this is all done pretty quickly. <clears throat> all right, so we'll take this one, kind of go over there. This one we'll bring down to here. And again, this is, all I'm doing is just grabbing the four corners, lining them up to where I think the, the corners of the cake are, or the different surfaces. Um, you could actually have one surface, here I'll show you, this is kind of cool. You could have one surface go across the whole, each tier, but then what happens is when you play video across it, it really distorts it. Um, so really this is just kind of playing into a projector's natural um, projection state of projecting onto a flat surface, right? You know, that's what we're just kind of cheating the system here a little bit. All right, boom. So we basically have a cake map, you know, for each of the tiers. So um, what I did, just to back it up too, when I went over here to sources, you can choose different sources um, as your uh, your test, your uh, your mapping, um, you know, surface. Uh, that way, you're not mapping with the video, you know, from Grand VJ. You can load in your your own images. Honestly, these were great. Um, I love the you know the test cards for the most part. Those were great, or just that image. Uh, but then if I go back to Grand VJ. Now, actually, um, here, you should start to see, yeah, so you can start to see the images uh, coming through, you know, on that surface there. So obviously, um, I have to do a little bit more backing, but I just wanted to show you. So right there, we've already got a little image on the cake. Uh, let me back out of that real quick for a second. Come back here. Let's go back to our test cards. Um, all right, so I'm gonna come back to questions in a minute. So right now I wanna zoom in and fix all these. You know, it's kind of interesting too. You're gonna to end up with some really weird looking um, uh, images in your mapper mode 
um, because you're coming at different angles. Like I'm actually coming pretty straight head on, just a little bit up. Normally I'd be really high up coming down at a sharp angle. So this would even look really uh, a lot more distorted uh, perspective wise. So the cool thing here is like, say if I want to edit this point right here, now I can use my, my cursor and I can really just dial it in. It might be hard to see on the, um, Hey Jim, I think uh, I only I don't see a side by side going to Facebook Live. It looks like it's a little preview window. Um, all right, let me check on that for you. Hey Jeremy, yo, I've got some. I don't know if it's cool or not. Just my humble opinion, but I've got my our chaos in up on my computer as well. So at some point, if you want to show the difference between Grand VJ and Media Master. <laughs> I can yeah, I show I, you that. And oh my goodness. I found the file. Now I don't have a projector hooked up, but I obviously saved the file from the show that I did for that particular cake. But I can show you all the different layers that I have um saved be cool, yeah. in my file. It won't you be You know, I think um I think that'd be great for a uh, you know, I think what we well, Jim, we're gonna just gonna decide for you right now, right? We're doing a whole series of projection stuff, you know, projector fam sponsored sure. videos. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sure. Because, um, yeah, that could be a whole thing for sure. Uh, you know, I played around with Media Master, and it's like I was, I was lost. Um, but I'm starting to figure it out, you know, some, do some tutorials. Um, okay. So what was I going to say? Um, you know, when, when you hit reset, this is kind of brings you back out. The way you zoom in and out on this, by the way, is a little complicated or a little, you know, cumbersome. I just use my wheel mouse, and I, I, I highly recommend using a mouse to do this um, because if you try to use your trackpad, it's going to be super annoying. I don't know about anybody else. They might have better skills than me, but um, so I just wheel in. Wherever your mouse is is where it's going to wheel in. So say if I wanted to go down to the bottom of the cake, uh, I just hit reset and then zoom in down here. I thought there was a way to kind of mouse around, but I haven't, I, I don't think it's there anymore. So um, I might've been wrong. So anyway, so that we have our surfaces there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide all of these and I'm gonna lock them. So all over here on your surfaces, you have a little eyeball that just basically hides it or makes it visible. And then you have um, the lock here. It's, it's a lot like Photoshop if anybody's ever used that, you know, you have a lot of similar functions. Also do everything's layer priority or um, yeah there's layer priority so higher things will override lower things so now we're going to do the big cake or the big uh surface and this is where we're going to um uh this is where i'm going to actually add points and edit it a lot better so jim do we ever is it, are we still side by side i'm gonna look at the, the no project. it's <laughs> it's weird um on my side, I am seeing the side by side, but it's not broadcasting. So uh, I'm switching back and forth. I've switched back and forth a couple of times since you let me know that. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to give you guys a, a good view of the um, of the whole cake and and everything. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to map the whole thing. Um, this is uh, this is where it gets really tricky. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to actually get rid of my. Let me see if I go just to the outline. That doesn't matter. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna line this top left corner at the top left of the cake. I'm gonna line this top right corner at the top right of the cake. And then I'm gonna go down to the bottom and you know do the same thing on the bottom right. And we're gonna do it over here too. Looks perfect, doesn't it, right? <laughs> Done. Now, um, so here's the fun part. Um, you get to actually add uh, points along the path. And actually, yeah, I'm gonna go to a blank outline. I think it's a little easier to see where I'm adding points, and you can see. <clears throat> so when you edit the grid over here, you have, um, you can actually add points anywhere along the shape or you know the surfaces line or perimeter and then it allows you to drag points around. So a lot of people, um, I think the first one is just adding a point vertically. 
And you can see that where I've just added it and now I can move it to where I want it. And what I'll do is you can't see, but I always take the top point and I move it to the back top corner of the cake. It's really hard to see, but that way you just kind of, you have a little bit, bit of visuals on top of the cake. It's kind of a waste of spy, space anyways, because everything gets distorted. But um, I would say put a flower or, you know, a topper up there anyways, and you might not want to map that part. But, um, you know, I still like to add something there. <clears throat> now, you can go down a lot of these. If you click this one, then it adds one horizontally. But the problem is, once you get past this point, when you add another horizontal, it's going to add equal points to the to the whole surface, you know, kind of, um, it's just going to give you a ton of points. And to me, that's good for some surfaces, but, you know, for, I, there's an option down here called, um, you can add, I don't know, they just call it add control point, but it gives you a free um, placement. So I'm going to undo those two right there. And uh, the next two points, basically, oh, by the way, would be to subtract it. Yeah, you know, that's another way to do that. But I am going to click my free add, which is really great because now if you see, um, as I move my cursor around, uh, you can see, um, you know, I'm just moving up and down the cake. And what I'll do is I will work my way down from the top. I'll just find the top point, click add, and I'll, then I'll move it over. I'll move this up here. So we're now we're just going to outline the cake. All right. I'm gonna go back over here, click another free. Here, I'm gonna try and turn the brightness of this part up. Cause that might help. Uh, I don't know if it will or not. Okay. Hey Jeremy, if you don't, if you don't need your uh, full screen there, I'm not sure how the, that mapping works, but I'm wondering if you put it in side by side, if you want people to see the side by side, cause everything I'm doing over here won't, won't fix it. I don't know if I can, cause I'm sharing screen. Um, I, saw, I saw someone in the chat say that they prefer to see the bigger version of Grand VJ anyway, so I think we're okay, but... Oh, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. You know, it, yeah, if you had to sacrifice one thing, definitely keeping the Grand VJ the bigger, for sure. Yeah, because there's a lot of little places that we're going to be clicking around in here. So that's totally fine, if we're good with that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So now I'm going to add another point, you know, at the bottom of that first tier. And then I'll come over here to the right and I'll just drag it over to match the bottom of that first tier. Boom. And then I'll add another point here at the top of the second tier. And we're gonna get this really cool Tron looking cake in a second. <laughs> um, all right, just keeping going. <clears throat> now, one of the interesting things that I've run into, um, and I don't know why, but for some reason, I always like to start from the top and work my way to the bottom. If I've started at the bottom and work my way up to the top, by the time I get to that last click, it adds it below my other points, even though I'm clicking above it, and therefore it puts everything into like a, um, a Z dimension or like a 3D dimension, and it twists my image all around. I don't know why. Um, like, let me see, if I did one here, I wonder if that would do it. Yeah, like right here. So. It's now added it here, even though I clicked up here, and it just screws things up. I don't know why, but I'm sure there's a reason. So I'm just going to undo that. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, zoom out, zoom back in down here. So we're going to add another free point uh, right here on the bottom of the on the top of the bottom tier, and then I just line those puppies up. Oh, come here, where'd you go? And boom you've mapped a cake. <laughs> That's simple, honestly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Grand VJ. We'll throw some, throw a visual in here. Oh, actually, I'll just start over on this for a second. Um, but let me just, I'll explain the layers in a second. Let me see, what is that layer called? All right, so surface seven, right? That's That was my whole layer cake. I'm gonna double click that surface so I can rename it. Because when you have all these surfaces, it's really hard to keep track of it inside Grand VJ. So now I've renamed that one. You could go down and rename all of these to tier one, tier two, tier three. I've done that before. If you're not controlling what's happening on each tier, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and we're gonna combine all those tiers, all those surfaces into one group anyways. But um, right now you see I have the whole cake there. So now we're gonna jump over to Grand VJ and I've got whole cake here. And now it's um, the whole cake's mapped. <laughs> it's that simple. 
And then um, I'm going to jump over. <clears throat> well, that's a little weird. Why am I not seeing at the top? <laughs> that was weird. See, there are some, some weirdness happening, but you can still see that it's pretty much done. I don't know why that did that. Oh, wait, I don't think I added my point in there. Ask her at this point. Um, we'll come back to that and take a look at that. But now if you can see on the, if you can't really see it in the camera, but right now I have a whole bunch of red lines on my projection. Uh, that's because I have that surface selected. So if I click off of that, those red lines disappear. And um, to uh, also to right now I have, if I take away all of the, the cake, you, it might be hard to see, but I've got all these outlines. There's a bunch of white lines on my cake and I, I've actually done entire events. This is just your, um, your wireframe, but there's a little option up here, the third button over that says display surface in, information's on full screen. If you take that off, then it disappears on your live, um, your live mapping. That is there just for uh, calibration and setup. Um, it is quite common to leave that on by accident and halfway through a gig, you're like, why does it say surface right in the middle of my video? <laughs> so um, don't, don't, don't fret about it. Nobody really notices, but you know, that's just where it is. Uh, also too, um, there is a, a surface selection flash button up here. <clears throat> so. Like right now when I select all these surfaces, nothing happens. And again, this is good for just mapping, but when you're in a live event, you might wanna turn this off because if you come over here to make an adjustment during the event, as soon as I click this, uh, you can see it on the live camera, the, um, the layer will flash. It's kind of annoying. Uh, you definitely, if you're trying to make adjustments, uh, just go ahead and turn that off. But it's good when you're mapping because you're like, what surface am I on? Especially when they're all named surface. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, so hey, uh, Max, is there anything in the mapping that I might have missed right now that I want to just in the mapping part? You think? Uh, your mouth, your uh, your audio is not on. My daughter was in here, so I want to mute my. That's okay. Mic I mean, there's a whole bunch more we could talk about, but just real quick, is there anything basic that people might want to know? No, I mean, just other than naming your layers, because it can get real confusing real fast. Um, other than that, which you covered that, so that that's great. Uh, no, I mean you covered as far as clicking off the things up at the top, so you don't see your red lines and your wireframe, and seeing it flash on site. Uh, no, you've you've done a great job. Really okay. Cool, cool. So another thing that we'll talk about right here, uh, since I this the whole cake is all one surface, I stretched and manipulated that surface, so I basically bent it. And you can kind of see right here where the, the lines come down and they kind of bend here. It works really great on the cake. It looks good because it almost looks like it's bending and flowing over the tiers. There are some surfaces that you might not want that. So what you would do is um, I would right click the surface and say match output shape. And then now it's, it's not stretched and distorted. Um, and it still looks like it's rolling over the tiers, but um, play around with that. There's pros and cons to it. Obviously what happens here too is that, <clears throat> I'll show you this. So that whenever you start the mapper, this input window shows up. I don't use it a whole lot, so I always hide it. But in this scenario, you do need it because what happens here, when I said, let me undo real quick. Okay. So just real quick without going too crazy. Um, this top window is showing what is encompassed, what part of the visual is encompassed in your um, projection map surface. So right now it's taking the full 1080 video, the full rectangular video and shoving it into this cake, <clears throat> which may be good or may be bad. Most of the cakes, it's fine. But when we're doing like letters or different, if you're doing multiple surfaces that aren't physically connected, you wanna be able to combine those. So um, what happens is when I did match output to shape, it, it literally is just a cropping. It, you know, so I'm losing a ton of the video, but the video looks perfect. There is a way that you can come in here. Let me see if I can. Um, so if I take, I think this this one here now, if I take my bound my bound bounding box, and then stretch it out to fit more of the video, 
more of the video is now inside the cake, it's still not going to be perfect because unless I take these points and stretch it out, it's not going to encompass it. But then you get back into warping the video. So I just wanted to explain that to you guys really quickly. Um, you know, it, you might see some artifacts or distortions of the video that will pop up. This is how you fix that. It's it's still kind of complicated, um, but it, there is an option to fix it. I just wanted to kind of explain that to you. So I'm going to undo everything I just did. <laughs> uh, oh, I see what's going on here now, though. Wait, bring my bounding box, though. Ah, okay, see, I told you I'd find it. <laughs> Remember how, and I don't know why this did this, but for some reason, my top tier has no video on it, even though I've drawn the box. Wait, even though I've drawn the box around it, you know, to fit it. And if I look up here in my input shape, there's a whole part of my box that has no video in it. So if you just grab that and pull it down, you see it actually brings the video into my, my, uh, my shape. Just another weirdness to chalk up to software, right? I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there is a reason for it, but uh, there's a lot of things that happen that you just stumble upon and you figure out how to fix it. <laughs> All right, um, okay, so that's, now we're gonna jump over to uh, Grand VJ, and I'm gonna show you how to combine all these tiers and, and how to control them over there. Um, okay, I was just seeing if there's any other questions about that. All right, so I'm gonna delete all of this over here. Like, I guess real quick, as far as, and if anybody doesn't know about our chaos, uh, over on the left, you have your, um, your file browser uh, down here at the bottom of this, you have um, the preview window for um, for whatever you're looking at in your uh, file browser. Uh, and then in the middle here is your what they call the matrix. These are all the cells that hold all your videos. But you can always just drag and drop from your file browser directly into the layers. Um, but it's always awesome to have them in your um, you know in your uh, your matrix. And you have different banks of matrices. Uh, here are all of your um, control settings for, let me get rid of that, for your layers and your cells. There's a tricky thing. Um, I guess real quick, I'll just say, if this color is brown, wait, where did my annotate go? There we go. If this color is brown, then you are manipulating the attributes of the layer. If it is, oh, come on, click. Oh, my annotate doesn't like to do that. If you are, wait, is it brown or is it blue? Did I get that backwards? Hey Max, how come it's not changing? <laughs> what did I do wrong? Uh, yeah. It's been a hot minute since I've been in Grand, in Grand VJ, so I'm not quite sure why it's not changing. Oh, there it goes. There, yep. Okay. I know I'm not, not losing my mind. Nope. <laughs> Trust me, it's, all right, so if you right click, the cell, this will turn blue. Then you're manipulating the attributes for that cell. If you right click it and it turns brown, or if you click on a layer and that becomes brown, that means you're at, um, controlling the attributes of just that layer. There's, um, there's some reasons for that. And I'll, I'll just wanted to let you know, I don't know, we can talk about that more later. All right, so I am, and then over here you have your preview window and then you have your, um, your layers. So I'm just gonna kill everything. Uh, what you have here at the top is your mixer output, right? So this is where you get to choose what surface you want to throw um, a visual on. So this is how it defaults to. So if I throw this in here and I'm doing the whole cake, it's going to project on the whole cake. If I just change this to one of the tiers, oh, okay, I got to go back here and see. Troubleshooting live will show you how to fix problems because nothing happened. I knew something was wrong. So when I went back here to uh, Video Mapper, all of my tears had been hidden. I closed their eyes. They put them to sleep. So we're going to wake them back up. And then we're going to jump back over here. So now you see when I choose a different surface, that video is going to jump around to those respective surfaces of the tears. Pretty basic, right? Um, so first thing we want to do uh, we'll just take an example right here. Um, I want to combine all of those tiers into one surface because there's no way you could put all the videos on all six surfaces individually like here. I mean, there is a way, but it's stupid. So 
uh, what we're going to do is you click this button over here to the right of the mixer and that you see right there it says a little pencil it says edit the mixer then now in the center uh window you have different options so um there's for transitions because you you do have an a b fader up here which i'm not even going to talk about but that's what that, that option is here but you want to click on output and when you go to output you can uh you basically want to create a group so you click edit output groups and here you see all of your surfaces and you're going to click new and we're going to call it tears tears of a clown there we go <laughs> Uh, Jamie Buddy would probably like that. I liked all of his bad dad jokes today. That was really funny. So after you create your group of tiers, uh, a group called tiers, you are now going to select the surfaces that you want to be inside of that group. And then you click those. See, nothing still happened though. Um, it's all still only on one surface because I now have to go over to this mixer and choose tiers. And now they're all on the tiers. Um, so I can drag another video in here. There we go. Now, a little Daft Punk for everybody. <clears throat> this is where I think I'm going to turn my brightness back down because it was starting to blow it out. And I know, especially with the cake visual being so little. All right, there we go. And FYI, I know everybody's going to ask. I'm using the Epson 1985 projector. Um, it's a 5K or 5,000 lumen one. Or 40 under, whatever. Hey, Jeremy, what are you using to, what are you using to zoom in? Zoom in where? Um, someone asked in the chat, what do you, what keys did you use to zoom in? I think it was a couple of minutes ago. Oh, on the, um, yeah. Uh, the only place I've been zooming is on the mapper. Right. So okay. that's just my wheel mount, uh, the wheel on the mouse. The wheel on the mouse goes round and round. Yeah. So you just click on, you just make sure that screen's active and then you scroll on your mouse in or out. Yep. Okay. Perfect. You can do plus or minus two, but it's just easier to do the mouse. And uh, like I was saying before too, it zooms in centered based on your mouse position. So if I click reset and I put my mouse at the top, when I zoom in, it's gonna zoom in on the top. And then if I hit reset, and now I wanna go to the bottom of the cake, it's gonna zoom in when I move my, my cursor down to the bottom. So that's how well, that works. Um, going back over here. So we've set up the tiers, the groups as a tier. Or a group. Yeah. Uh, now what we're going to do is uh, we want to get control of, like I want to have my whole cake here, but you have to insert another mixer. So I'm going to go down here to layer four. You can go anywhere, honestly. I'm just picking halfway down. And then you click this little uh, button next to the A, you know, the A side of the, the fader. It says, insert a mixer above the selected layer. Do that, boom. Um, and now you have a whole nother um, choice, you know, a whole nother uh, options of outputs. Um, also too, if you ever do all outputs, that's what it's gonna default to. So just be aware that if it's on everything, that's why. Um, you haven't selected a different tier or different, um, uh, Yep, cool. Now I get to show you another, what layer priority means inside the mapper mode. So as you can see, I have all my tiers up there. And oh wait, uh, let's go to whole cake. And when I select whole cake, it overrides all of my tiers. Even though, you know, it's weird. In Grand VJ, my tiers mixer is above my whole cake mixer output. Because let's go back over here to the mapper. Because whole cake is above all of the tiers, it takes priority. It's just something to be aware of. So all I have to do is drag my whole cake surface down and it fixes it. You can see all of the the you know the Daft Punk music videos playing on all the tiers, and I got the visuals on the background or on the whole cake. So um <clears throat> wanted to show yeah so and now you have your different fading here uh, you can bring things up and down it's kind of cool if you can actually sit behind you know hide your laptop somewhere behind the cake 
you can change this up all night long. I think that is one of the differences between Grand VJ and Media Master. Grand VJ, you need to have an active operator on it all of the time in order for anything to change. Media Master, I think you can set a timeline. Is that correct, Max? Yeah, I can show you if you want, but yeah, you can yeah, definitely do that. Yeah, so you can kind of set an automation. There is a, a, a randomized automation play on Grand VJ where you can put the button here, uh, what is it called, uh, beat and auto play settings, and it'll just jump through all the cells in this one bank. It's great, but it's not, you know, it's not, um, not ideal for this scenario. So, um, let's talk about now. I mean, can you show someone asked about the different tiers? Are you able to quickly show like, uh, let me go back to this question. Lauren said with tiers, can you have uh, tier one, have one video and tier three have a different video that, and then something different in the middle. So something, yep. something, on, something on one, something on two, something on three. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yep. All right, cool. So the neat thing about uh, Grand VJ is that you can go up to 16 layers. I've only set it to eight right now because that's what matches my Akai APC40 for faders. But you can go up to 16, so it just gets messy. So you could have a ton of different layers in it. If you wanted to have the same video, let's see. So right now, that video is playing on all of the tiers. So let's go back to edit, our, edit the mixer, go up here to output, edit groups, Let's create a new group. We're gonna call it tier one. And oh, I see this is where naming your surfaces really comes in handy because I don't know what they're <laughs> named, but I'm gonna assume surface one and two, you know. So let's just say surface one and two, and we're gonna close it. And then now we're gonna go up here and call it tier one. And it's just on the top of the cake. So what you're gonna do then is um, go right below it to layer seven insert another mixer, let's edit that group again, come up here, create a new one, call it tier two, and click okay, and it'll be surface three and four. And I think I, let me see, this will be interesting, can I just do it right here live? Let's just do tier three, and then surface five and six. So now, we go back down to this layer, we'll call, uh, pull up here too. Uh, let's put a hummingbird on that layer. And then I'm gonna come down here to layer six. I'm gonna insert another mixer. And then we're gonna go down and select tier three. And then we're gonna put uh, a little, you know, let's go retro. A little soul to soul, keep on moving. And uh, it's kind of a dark video. Here, let's go with this one here. What are you trying to say, Jeremy? It's, the, the contrast was really low. Just kidding, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to little Eden and put them up. That's one of my, I like that song. Uh, you can't hear any of the audio. Well, A, you can't hear it because of, um, well, you know, we don't have it going through Zoom. But this brings up a good point. If you're using music videos or any video with audio, uh, there is a little button up here that, um, a little speaker that you can, um, that's where you control your audio. That's all I'm just saying. Um, you have to be careful with that. Sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That shows a different video on each tier. Now, let me go back here real quick, because um, I know we were talking about creating, like I was gonna show you, if I did one surface on just one tier, so it didn't look like it was duplicated, if I do another surface, we'll just quickly draw it out and edit the, here, let me get rid of these other guys so you can see what I'm doing. Um, oh, let me, there, now I can see it on my cake. And we're just gonna draw this guy in. I'm just gonna show you what happens because it's really distorted. It's gonna look bad. But if you have a visual, it might look cool. So what I just did there is surface seven, we're gonna call it tier two wide, whatever. So I go back to Grand VJ, and let's just say we wanna put this video on tier two wide, and bring that up. Now let me get rid of my, my outlines. Cool, so 
now you can see that I have the whole video playing across the whole ear. Um, from this angle, <laughs> that's really kind of funny. From this angle that I have my projector, which is almost essentially right in front of the cake, it looks fine. If you're gonna put a projector right in front of your cake, no problem. If you're gonna put a projector really high up on the, um, you know, from a high angle, it might distort it a little more. Um, Oh, it's really kind of funny. Sometimes where the video stretches out the sides, it really stretches it. So, you know, that's just another way you could do this. It actually doesn't look that bad right now. <laughs> I think if I were to take some other visuals and put them on there, it would break it basically. You have a 90 degree angle right there. So, you know, it's kind of hard to make that look perfect. Um, just take my word for it. But again, just like I just found out now, in some scenarios, it will work. So you just have to really experiment with your situation. Um, so that could be a really cool effect too. And we can bring up this, you know. So you could do that with like a wedding video. Like I do have a, um, a wedding engagement video right here. So we'll put that on the wide. Um, so that could be cool too. You know, if that works in your scenario, that would be really neat. Instead of having two smaller videos going on the sides. Oh, I know what it was. Um, because say, on on the bottom tiers because it gets really wide let's just move this guy down here right and then i'm going to just remap it so this is the beauty of this right you can just do it all on the fly and we're going to make this the tier three you're the bottom tier depending on the size of your cake if you have a really big cake that bottom tier could be really stretched out so it's going to distort the video so i think you can get away with it on a middle tier and on the top tier, you know, again, it might be too small. So, you know, it's just kind of experiment with it. Um, sometimes we don't even put video on the bottom tier because our other cake's really big and it has a really long, narrow um, bottom tier. So um, you might not want to do that. So, all right. And we'll just get rid of that guy. Jeremy, um, we got a few questions. Yeah, um, hit me. <laughs> so, um, some uh, Paul asked, do you have a waterfall effect from top to bottom? We showed that a little bit earlier when Max was on. I don't know if you happen to have one handy. I do have one, yeah. So this is, this is interesting. This is what Max was saying. I don't really know. Um, here, I'll throw it on the whole cake, right? Now, what's going to happen is that <laughs> you can see up here in my top right corner. Here, let, me, uh, let me make my preview bigger. This is the visual that you're going to get from Limart. It is pre-tiered, but it's like a five-tier cake, right? One, two, three, four, five-tier cake. So, you know, unless you're doing a five-tier cake, it's it's not going to really work. But I found a workaround, and I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but you can go in here and let me uh, – what I'm going to do now is <clears> – <throat> I am going to uh, adjust the position of this. So I'm going to zoom it in. Whoops, where'd it go? Yeah, I'm going to go to this guy real quick because that one actually is a little more. I'm going to pause it. Now I can see. So I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom it in. And I'm going to slide it down. I was playing around with this earlier because I was like, that's kind of cool. I've always wanted to do this. We've actually never used this on our cakes. Um, there is, and you can, once you click on this, oh, there we go, I almost got it lined up. Uh, you can uh, use your mouse to wheel it around to kind of play around the sizing. Uh, wait, come back up, there we go, that's almost there. Let me uh, slide it over. Actually, no, I'm gonna fix that in the mapper. All right, so now I have just manipulated the, the, the layer um, so that way I can make that visual fit because it was five tier and now I just made it into three tier. So, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to play, oh, wait, wait, before I do that, here's another little trick. These buttons down here on the bottom, they say copy effect parameter, copy mixing parameter, copy position size. So since I just made all those changes on this layer with the position and size, if I had dragged another, visual on top of it, it would have just erased everything I did. So I had to make sure that that is not copied. 
So that way, whatever attributes, mixing, effects, or position you've applied to that layer, it will now stick no matter what you put in there. So I'm gonna throw the waterfall in there and hope it works. There it goes. <laughs> so, Good job. It, yeah, there you go. It maxes is that, I mean, it, is that how you do this? I don't really understand the lime art thing. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much got the idea. Uh, you either zoom in or you make the, uh, see I do individual layers and stuff, but you can, and you can do it in a timeline so that they fall from one to the other, but your workaround is probably the quickest, most prudent way to get it done. Um, okay. So like if you had a three tier cake, if you do the reverse math, you could take the bottom three layers, map those, and then the other ones wouldn't be visible. You could do it like, there's a couple different ways you can do You'd it. You'd have to crop it out, yeah. Right. It's really crazy, and that's definitely, um, I know this is what I did with Grand VJ. There might be something different in Media Master for sure, but I know the mapping's the same. Yeah, it's interesting. You could always re-edit the video too, I guess. You could just cut out, you know, in Premiere, and then, you know, um, cut out the bottom, bottom layers, I guess. Correct. So, um, but yeah, that just shows you the power. I mean, um, you play around with stuff enough, hit enough real life scenarios of, uh oh, what do I do now? <laughs> That's how we all learn. Um, but yeah, I love this. This is uh, the the waterfall. I've always wanted to do that. That's like really cool. And then now when I throw this one back in there, you have super disco, you know, 80s neon cake. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what uh, are the other ones over here? Another, another question, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, so Lance asked, um, so this can just be like solid color, uh, or stills on the individual panels or tiers. Um, basically he's just asking, he just wants clarification on this can be used for anything. You don't have to use this just for a cake. You use this for a wall for. An oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that is one thing I love about our chaos. Um, I'm sure media master as well, but grand VJ, uh, any our chaos product you can use it, you don't even have to use it as a mapping software. I mean, that's just the extension. You know, the XT is the mapping. So if you do buy this, make sure, and you want to use it for mapping, make sure you buy Grand VJ XT, not just Grand VJ. So, but, you know, we use this software, we'll hook it up to a TV, we'll do club visuals during a mitzvah. Um, you know, we'll do, um, you know, club visuals in a nightclub. Um, and then, you know, you can hook it up into a wall, you know, you can project and map, you can, even if you have a flat surface, you can still use the mapper side of it and still create funny shapes on a wall. So that way you can make it look different than just a big rectangle up there. You can put somebody's logo in there. So yeah, there's a ton of stuff you can do with this. Um, we've even used it for like a video server for like corporate events. You know, it depends, you know, um, like to play somebody's video while they're walking up or play a different um, uh, name animation uh, because we were mapping it. So there's a lot of different things you can use it for. Yeah, I remember when you helped us out at the, when you were working the Projectogram booth with us two years ago at Mobile Beat. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you <laughs> used this and you just had all of our, a whole bunch of different animated monograms down at the bottom. And so for like anyone that wants to use this at a bridal show or, a, um, you know, a wedding open house or something like that. It, it's a quick way that you can bounce between different designs and showcase your work very quickly. Yeah, and um, uh, I'll, I'll give props to Arnaldo Offerman who um, had the idea, kinda, that's where I kind of got the idea for the Projectogram booth. He, I think he, what he does at weddings is he'll have uh, a tablet or something that's extended from his laptop that shows just the matrixes, uh, the banks here, and it allows the, the clients to come up and hit you know, press whatever visual they want to see. So you can make it interactive for the clients as well. Um, another question. So David asked about your cake and I know we talked about Max's earlier, but he, he missed the whole cake discussion, but I don't know if we talked a lot about your cake, Jeremy. So can you talk about where you got it from? Um, um, what it's made out of that sort of stuff? Sure. So this cake, and I just took the visuals off. So um, it, it, oh wait, I forgot. Now I just took the camera off. <laughs> Let me select the cake again. Where did that go? Such a lovely angle on me. All right. <laughs> there you go. There's the cake. So um, this cake, uh, I just ordered the styrofoam from a fake cake place online. And then I partnered up with the cake maker who made it into a fake cake. 
Um, honestly, the styrofoam is really cheap. You're gonna pay probably about two or three times the cost of the styrofoam just in shipping because <laughs> they're big styrofoam pieces. It's really silly, but um, the uh, unless you live close to a place. But you know, we just partnered up with the cake maker. They made it look like a real cake. Uh, we have another cake that we had made after this one because we wanted it to be bigger. And also I wanted the edges to be a lot sharper. So that cake maker actually just used more of a plaster surface. So, or a drywall plaster, I, you know, it looks like, it looks like a cake, but then again, at the same time, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it looks fake. It doesn't look like a real fondant cake. So, um, uh, but I like it better because I can make those visuals look really, really sharp. Like I think, um, Let's see, where is, uh, like some of these things, it's kind of hard to see, oh, maybe this one. Um, the, the layers, you know, it's a little wobbly because the fondant's not sharp. So, and even down here at the bottom, kind of hard to see, but you know, at the bottom of it, it kind of warps a little bit. So that's my personal preference. And you said, so uh, for anyone who, that didn't see, we did a seminar last week, it's on YouTube. You can go on YouTube and watch it. Um, we talk more about generalities as far as mapping. Uh, Max did some hospitals. So Max talked about everything he did for mapping some hospitals with some really nice inspirational messages and thanking all the hospital staff. Um, and then Jeremy did uh, more generalized mapping. Um, and one of the things that he talked about in that is using a fake cake for all of this mapping. When you're talking about cake mapping, and again, you can use this mapping for anything, but when you're talking in terms of cake mapping, he specifically said, uh, rec his recommendation is to, to go with a fake cake and then you know have the real cake in the back that just gets brought out at some point. And yeah. Jeremy brought up a great point that I never even thought of. Like, I knew it from the standpoint of the logistics, but I didn't think about the standpoint of like now they get to look at the cake all night and see that effect for the whole evening versus only a portion of the night. All right, so yeah, I think somebody asked if I can go full screen on the cake. There you go. There you go. Yeah, 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 I can do that. Um, yeah, and then I was gonna show you some of the, the different, you know, visuals like you can see, um, you know, just clicking through, you can have, the sky's the limit with, with stock video, you know. We get everything from motion loops to digital juice to projection mapping store. Um, there, I mean, there's so many places out there to get visuals. Um, you yeah, have, now you can see it. Hey, Jeremy, you've got it on side by side. Do you want to try turning off side by side and just showing, see if you can just show the cake and then. Oh, you know what? Now you've got. Is, is that me doing side by yeah, side? It, it, yeah, all of this is based off of you, what you're doing on your end. That's what I figured out. I've got it. gallery view. No, I've got speaker view. I've got gallery view. There we go. So now we're in gallery view. So try, um, try. <laughs> yeah. We're looking at you. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, wait, where did my video go? Where's my options? Oh, let me go full screen and see if it pops up. There's an option if you, um, if you go to gallery view, and if you click on yourself and say spotlight video, it should make it so that that's the only thing that shows. Um, well, that's one way. Wait, did I do that? Oh, the host has spotlighted your video. So let's see if that does it for people. I'm gonna give it a second to refresh. Unfortunately, we can't tell. Um, for anyone who hasn't done Zoom to Facebook Live or actually anything to Facebook Live, there's like a 30 second delay. So you, you don't know what's actually working and what isn't working for a little bit. But oh, cancel the spotlight that. video. Okay, so you just did spotlight video. Let's see if that does it. Um, yeah, we're waiting, we're waiting. No, um, that's so weird because normally there was a drop down where I could do side by side and all that, but I don't even see that now, so. When you're in full screen, I don't know if it lets you do it, but you went all the way up to the top, right? Uh, yeah, I know it's weird because I, I, we were just playing around with that earlier and uh, why is it not doing it now? Enter full screen. Yeah, now you're It looks like we're stuck in the gallery mode. Yeah, you're still in gallery. Let me go. Oh, that's full screen. Oh wait, do I have to click? Stop my video, rename, cancel the spotlight video. 
Interesting. Weird. Um, I canceled the spotlight video just to see if I get my video up. Oops, wait, I stopped my whole video. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. So as far as video content, David David asked about video content. Um, if you make your own or if you get it from somewhere, Max, I think posted the link to it earlier. Um, where did you say Max? Uh, it's called the Lime Art Group, and I believe they it's in the um, in the chat. If you scroll through it, the name of the group is the Lime Art Group. But there's actually a website. Let me scroll back through. Uh, it's in the thread. Let me go there. Yeah, I'm video full screen. Oh. Video mapping store. Oh yeah, yeah video mapping that, dot yeah. store. Yeah, video mapping. Yeah, video mapping store. store. Yeah, yeah. There's a ton of stuff there. Um, that's the way everybody cheats. Uh, not cheats. It's using resources. It's not yeah. cheating at all. Yeah, <laughs> making good. Well, yeah, make good use of your time. It's kind of. I mean, it's basically a service. For for anyone that doesn't know, like that, you know, that's the main thing that we do is we're we're creating this content for anyone that can't create it, not specifically for mapping, but just for you know monograms, logos, weddings, animations, all that sort of stuff. Um, but same thing, it's making good use of your time because even if you can do this stuff, if it's going to take you way longer, your time is worth something. Definitely. Um, I wanted to show people one other quick little fun thing. I'm trying to, it sucks. I wish we could get the cake going full screen. <laughs> but, yeah. well, maybe they can. Oh, no, because you're all just live streaming, yeah. Um, no, speaker view. I'm speaking unpinned video. Now it's pinned. I don't know. All if right. You so put your, um, put your view to um, to gallery. So that's gallery. And then if I hide self view. Nope. I don't want to do that. No. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it's, I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway, I just wanted to show people really quick. There is a cool thing you can do here. Um, let's just say, um, hold on, let me fix this real quick. Uh, I am going to show how to make fire and ice cake. Ooh, everybody excited? Okay. Oh, wait, that one's going to be. As long as you keep talking, Jeremy, it's full screen. So okay, next I'll keep talking. I'll keep talking. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to show you a quick little trick on layer blends. So I'm going to do the effect, and then um, I am going to um, show you guys the effect. So I'm going to do the effect, and I'll show you how I did it. All right. So what you've got. So you can see the cake, right? <clears throat> so we have fire on the cake. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And then if I hide this, now we've got snowfall. So the cool thing is if I go into, and I'll show you this in a second, I'm just going to do it. Now I've got fire and ice. <laughs> um, so we're going to hide that again. Boom. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool effect here. And then I'll make that fire a little bit bigger or zoom it out a little bit. I don't know why, but everybody loves to see a wedding cake on fire. It's really cool. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did that. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. And this is the other power of our chaos in general. I mean, Media Master and Grand BJ. You have um, a lot of what they call layer blends, uh, blend modes. Uh, it's a mixing mode up here. So if I spotlight my mouse so I'm back in here in the full screen right um, you can see uh, in the middle here when you click mixing so I've got this layer of fire and uh, right now it's solid black you know fire but then if you click this uh, mask mode uh, luminance reject oh, sorry luminance rejection masking mode what it does is it knocks out all the black uh, it's like a chroma key or a luma key. It knocks out all the black, so all the color comes through. And you have a whole bunch of power here. You could do different colors as well. Um, like that knocks out the light. Uh, you could do color where if I just want to knock out the red. Um, you know, it in this scenario, really, this one is just the best. Oh, I gotta, let me reset it. There you go. So that's how you can get a fire and ice cake. 
um, you have to play around with your layers, basically. Um, there's a ton of power in here. Uh, if anybody knows Photoshop, that's where I learn about blending modes and, you know, but they call it mask modes. But there's a whole bunch of different, um, you know, layers up here. You can do addition as well. Uh, let's go back to normal and zoom this guy in so you can see. So going to mixing, you got addition, you got multiply. I mean, if, like I said, if you know Photoshop, then you've seen these before, lighten. This is kind of blending mode. So now you've kind of gotten it lit on there, but it also makes it, um, it's really cool. I, the best, I've seen, I've done this a lot with different logos and club visuals, and this is where you're mixing all the visuals live, and this is what a VJ is. You know, you are blending all these things like a DJ would songs. Um, so that's the beauty of it. Um, it's not just a set it and forget it thing. You can have a lot of fun with it. So anyways, um, that was just uh, that quick, um, fun little art chaos thing. Uh, I think our some uh, questions popped up. What are the cake dimensions from David? Um, this cake is, uh, I think, uh, about 20. Wait, that's, I think that's uh, 18 inches tall. That one was, uh, I think each tier is six inches. So like I said, we had another one built that was 24 inches tall because it was four six inch tiers. So, anywho. Um, Lance asked, can you, can you take a live input into like uh, Grand VJ? Yes, you can. Yes, 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 you can. Uh, the cool thing, um, yeah, I've done that before. So when we do production, um, here, let me uh, get this back here real quick. There you go. Now you get to look at me. Hey. <laughs> uh, when we do production um, on events, uh, we're not the DJ. So a lot of times the DJ will be playing music videos and we want to actually take their music videos and funnel them through. And there's totally a way to do it. You go up here to sources. And like I said, there's honestly, we could probably do a year's long worth of our chaos tutorial because <laughs> there's so much stuff in here. But if you see up here where it says live inputs, uh, this is where um, it has, oh, this would be fun. Um, this is where it has the, the camera here. So I can put myself on the camera and then is my webcam here too. So if you have a video capture card and we have this one by Elgato, it's, um, it's a video, uh, an external video capture that goes into USB 3.0. It allows me to capture an HDMI input. So I run that through here. It shows up under, up here under sources as a live input. And then I can, um, run any visual live input through. But you can also hook up a webcam, just like I have now. Uh, this would be interesting. I wonder if it'll work because Zoom's using it. But let's throw um, a camera on the cake. And there we go, we've got video feedback. <laughs> so there you go. So um, let's throw this camera on and that I think that's because I'm using it right now on Zoom. Let's see if I change my video. Um, go back to Logitech. Start video. I don't think it likes that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, but you can do that. Uh, you can have live video on a cake or, I mean, you can have live video. What I've done is um, actually, yeah, let's see. Let's kill all that because it does not like that. Um, there we go. Now we're back. I've used uh, a live, just a webcam. I've attached to my computer, pointed at the dance floor. Everybody's dancing. They see themselves on the TVs. They go crazy. Very simple. Yep. What else we got? This is great. Um, <laughs> I think I think we've we've covered everything. Um, someone asked again, I'm, so I'm looking at restream for anyone that hasn't used it. They've got this cool chat interface where you can see all the chat, but you can't see oftentimes who asked, but someone asked, how are you selling to clients? Is this just people uh, are seeing this? Yeah, I see that. That's Jonathan Mack in the Projection Bros group. Uh, how am I selling this to clients? Well, which part? <laughs> you know, there's so much. Uh, as far as cakes go, um, I... You know, I'll be honest with you, I haven't been super active in selling cakes because it is uh, such, I charge, I started $1,000 and 
And then we go up from there, depending on content creation, complexity of setup, if I'm doing one projector, or if you're doing two projectors like Max, I mean, it can just level up from there. <clears throat> so we've uh, sold it, we've done many, but um, more corporate. So, um, you know, if you just show them pictures and videos, if you're trying to sell it to your, your wedding client or to whoever, I mean, that's what you're gonna do. They're gonna want something cool. If they, you know, if they're that type of client that wants this, you know, some people don't want that traditional or they don't want that crazy techno cake. You know, they're just gonna want, um, you know, the classic stuff. So you gotta know your client, right? Um, a lot of uh, people are, um, you know, this is the same client that doesn't want colored lighting at their wedding, you know? Uh, they, they're like, I don't want lights at my wedding because they saw all super flashy, gross colors, you know? So they don't know that it can just be beautiful amber, elegance and candlelight. So you can do that with cake mapping. You can just have very subtle effects going on it, or you can make it look like a disco. So um, that's how we're selling it. We're not selling it to clients. Um, projection mapping in general, again, it's just the client. Um, I've done projection mapping for really high-end mitzvahs uh, and corporate events. Oh, and we did it for a Sweet 16, uh, where we did the Wizard of Oz cake. We did that for that, and then, um, Corporate events have used the cake mapping and projection mapping where we've done buildings and whatever, you know, so <clears throat> that's typically where we've done it. Um, but, you know, the, our chaos, like I said, you can use it for a ton of stuff, even if you're just doing it as club visuals on the side. So, what about you, Max? How are you selling it? Just had to unmute myself. Um, I reverse sell. I have the hotels kind of sell it for me. And I think I talked about this last time. My best avenue of advertising, not only the fact that we've been in business for about 25 years and I know most of the players in town, I have the resorts sell it. And I'll say my normal rate is three grand, five grand, whatever it might be. You can sell it for 10 grand. You can sell it for whatever you want to make on it. As long as I make what I want to make from the event, I let the hotel sales staff be my sales staff. And then I'm not paying salespeople to work for me. They're making their cut on whatever they make above and beyond my rate. So it's kind of like having four or five different high-end hotel sales staffs under my umbrella, but they're really not because they want to make the money on the upsell and it gets me in their hotel or in their resort, so I let them sell for me. And I'll rebrand. I'll, I'll give them this video that you're seeing right now, and I'll take their logo, and I'll put it on it, and I will recut it in Premiere. I'll do whatever they want uh, to make it with their branding so that when they sell it to their client, it's as if it's their staff, and it doesn't bother me one iota. As long as that money comes in and it's in the bank account, I will recut, rebrand, or do whatever to keep my staff busy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and that's a good point, too. Um, you know, most of our corporate clients, if we're not dealing with them directly, uh, we work through a lot of what they call destination management companies. They are the corporate event planners that manage all the big, massive Microsoft and whatever, you know, big uh, events that happen at these resorts or destinations. So they're the ones that we sell to them, just like you know Max was saying, and they sell for us. And that's why if you ever watched any of my other videos, I am huge on planners. And you know, those are your friends, those are your sales staff. Yeah, exactly. Good point, Max. Well, and I think a lot of this goes back to some of the stuff that we've talked about in all the seminars, the ones that I've done myself, and then that you guys joined me with last week and even today. Um, the great thing, all this stuff is visual, it's so visual. And we have all these great tools these days for, to share visual content, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or all these different resources. So the best thing you can do is really get out there and just start doing it. Number one, it's going to be good practice for you, but then it gets your, your abilities out in front of decision makers, whether it's planners, whether it's, uh, the DMCs, brides and grooms, whatever the case is. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to you know, do a little bit of work in advance to, to set these things up, but it's going to, going to bring you the business in the future. And it allows you to get some good pictures and video of it as well. Exactly. Like I said last week too, um, we did the majority of the cake mapping that we did early on was all at wedding expos. And, you know, we, we would do it at networking events just to get that exposure. 
And um, even though we've probably sold it maybe uh, half a dozen times, um, I haven't really actively pushed it. As I said, it's a lot of work and a lot of people don't want to pay for it. But, um, you know, the other times that we've done it, I mean, we were the first to the market to do it. And everybody was like, oh my goodness, karma can do anything. You know, they were like, that's amazing. So the, the industry recognition exposure that it got us was far worth far more than um, actually selling it a few times. So, Great. Well, I'm going to wrap this up because we're way longer than I expected, but in a good way, because I think that we, you guys gave so much good content and I learned a bunch and I was trying to bounce around monitoring all the chat and everything. So I'm going to go back and watch this and, I like when I'm working, I like to have some, something in the background, whether it's music or something that I can learn from TV, whatever. So this is something I'm going to fire up later and rewatch and we'll have it up on YouTube for anyone um, that wants to rewatch this. And uh, Jeremy and Max have volunteered us for more of these. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to, to do them. Um, so yeah. hopefully, hopefully everyone's learning from these. And the great thing is Max showed Cooper uh, very early on. It was hands-on for him, which I think is really cool. So you can even fire this thing back up again, this video uh, from us on YouTube, and do like Cooper did and, you know, do it. You know, set up your stuff, follow <laughs> along with Jeremy, and watch what he did, and um, hopefully it helps you. That'd be cool. Hey, Max's daughter. <laughs> um, Thanks, Max. Um, Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, people, message us. Let us know what you want to see. Um, I was thinking it'd be cool. So this is my projector here. Like I said, you know, the cake's right there. If I just turn it around, I, I map that wall behind me. Maybe we could do that. Or if you want to see how to stack projectors. I think that would be a good one, Max, to show how to stack projectors, how to do multi-projector blending. There's a whole bunch of stuff we can do. I have to find out if I have enough room to do that here in this. I have to. Uh, <laughs> well, I can do it here with my baby Epsons, you know, compared yes. to what you have for sure. Mm -hmm. That yeah. thing makes me look. That thing <laughs> makes. <laughs> I like your co host there. Yeah, there we go. He's been good the whole time, so I promised her at the end she could come in and say hello. Uh, hello, what's her name? Her name is Juliana. Hi, Juliana. Hi. Everybody say hi to Juliana. Hi. We're on my second camera, the first one died. <laughs> so. Hi Jim, well, got it. <laughs> thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Max and Jeremy. And um, hopefully, we'll be back uh, very soon with some more. Sounds good. Bye, guys. <laughs>